Shalom Israel. We are back again. I hope everything is going well on your end. Well, it's been a minute, Israel. I hope everything is going the way you plan on your end, or at least something close to it. I'm going to say a few weird words here today having to do with these very prophetic times we're in. And Israel, I'm going to say this. Nothing should ever change in terms of whether I speak to you every day, every week, or every month. The message is always going to be very consistent that we are to put our full faith into the Most High God of Israel, Yahweh. That's the script that we are to follow. Nothing's going to change that. We are to stay focused on Yahweh, and Lord willing, he shall redeem us out of this captivity. Nothing is going to change that. This message will always stay consistent along those terms. Now, what I will do is I'll come in here and speak to you guys about certain events that are unfolding that hold a special significance to us and our family events that could be major turning points, pivotal moments. Because as I've mentioned before, we are living in the greatest story ever not told. We are living out the crescendo, the climax of this 2000 plus year script that the Most High God of Israel our Father has put together the most incredible script this planet has ever known. The script that's never been told with the correct characters in place, has it? Not once has Holly Weird tried to tell the truth about who and what we are. They wouldn't dare tell that story, would they, Israel? They wouldn't dare want the public to wake up to who the Most High God of Israel's chosen people are. Holly Weird, they don't want to tell that story. But they will tell the greatest story ever not told a hundred different other ways, won't they? That's the devil for you. And that's the synagogue of Satan for you. The deceivers. They're playing their role. They're doing exactly what the Most High has asked them to do, Israel. And so it's up to us to do exactly what the Most High has asked us to do. And he's asked us to cling to him. He's asked us to not be a part of this wicked world and the worldly things of this world. He's asked us to detach from this let the heathens be heathens and let the Israelites be the Israelites. That's what the Most High has asked us to do. And the more any folks out there try to straddle the fence, try to have one foot in the Most High's world and one foot in Esau's world, the more you are going to run the risk of being on the wrong side of the fence on that dreadful day of judgment. This is not the time to be straddling the fence, Israel. This is not the time to be trying to immerse yourself in this wicked world that is soon about to be judged on biblical proportions. We already know this world is being judged right now, but I'm talking about that final judgment that comes that'll catch a lot of people off guard lord willing anyone who listens to this channel does not get caught off guard but that's up to y'all we're going to talk about these storms that are coming up in the new orleans area it's in the gulf of mexico kind of just brewing around right now 
and this may be connected to that dream I had a, a while back with the most high put on my spirit that there was going to be some type of transformation happening around the 12th or 13th of this month. Of course, the days don't always correlate perfectly, but he put that on my spirit. It was almost a month and a half, maybe two months ago. He told me that right around this time, something very transformational, if that is a word, is going to happen. Here we are, Israel. There's always a lot of things going on behind the scene that we never ever hear about. So we never want to forget that. Just because we hear about certain things, don't always think that that's the only thing that's going on. Because we're not hearing a lot about what's going on in Israel right now. We're hearing some things out of Europe, but a lot of things we're not hearing about that's going on in Europe. And we know good and well, we're not hearing a lot out of China. They got that information in that country on full lockdown, don't they? On full lockdown. So we never want to downplay the fact that we're not hearing everything that's going on in Israel. There's a lot of stuff going on behind the scenes. And never doubt for one second that the Most High God of Israel is not bringing judgment upon these enemy nations. Because they're going to they put up a front on the media. And they're going to get on there and put on a happy face. And pretend everything is going great. And that's what they're going to try to portray to the world. But we cannot be naive, Israel. We know that these devils are deceivers. And that's what they do. And we cannot downplay that they're actually pretty good at what they do. They've been doing it so long. And that's what the Most High God of Israel, Yahweh, has programmed to do. So they're very good at what they do in terms of being deceivers and liars. But we need to be better. Because we got the Most High God of Israel's spirit on us. And in these days, these are the days where we shouldn't be being fooled by these devils. Us being fooled by these devils, that should be a thing of the past at this point, Israel. Because I'm going to tell you something. There's a lot going on behind the scenes from the Yahweh and his angels and his armada, his host of angels that we don't hear about. They are getting busy. They are blasting this earth plane with unlimited amounts of energy plasmic energy that's waking our people up it's bringing all of this frustration and anger it's literally bringing hell to the surface to be dealt with and of course the media never going to tell you that they never going to tell you hell is literally bubbling up under our feet there's actually many videos of that just oil on fire bubbling up through neighborhoods Tar coming up in the Los Angeles area. Volcanoes going crazy. Cracks in the earth just forming out of nowhere. Hell is literally bubbling up through the surface under our feet, Israel. And I actually think that's one of the reasons why the Most High Yahweh told us, do not be overly amused by the heavens. Of course, we need to be cognitive and watching what's going on over our heads. We shouldn't be ignorant of the heavens. But he told us, don't be overly amused by the heavens. Because while Esau got everybody looking up, you can be swallowed up in a sinkhole right below your feet. Swallowed up by a huge crack that forms out of nowhere. Swallowed up by a huge earthquake. So we need to have a balance about how we go about our business in these last days, Israel. Be cognitive of what's going on all around us, not just up not just down but what's going on all around us at all times we have a front row seat to the greatest story ever told and every one of us should be honored 
that the Most High God of Israel has chose us to even be one of his people. We should never take that for granted, Israel. Because that's one of the reasons why the enemy nations hate us so much. That's why they envy us so much. And that's why they imitate us so much. With every ounce of, they, of their being, they were hoping that they would have been one of the chosen. And especially the ones that are cognitive of this. A lot of them just hate because they've been brought up and raised to hate. They don't really know the real reason why, but a lot of them do. We should never take that for granted, Israel. We should never forget who and what we are. And the Most High has chose us to be a part of his family. He has chose us to be alive at this very important, critical turning point of the evolution of this earth plane. He has chose us to sit at his table and to be a member of his family. And we should always be looking out for our family members, Israel. We are a family. Some call it a nation. Some call it a tribe. But we are a family. We're supposed to be looking out after, looking out after each other at all times, Israel. Especially in this prophetic time we're in. It's all going down. 2,000 plus years all being summed up in these next few years. Could be months, who knows, but I'm going to say worst case, worst case the next few years. Very prophetic. And one of the reasons why I'm speaking about this storm right here, of course, a lot of people are saying, oh, this is engineered, this is harp, this is Esau, this is that, this is this. You call it what you want. But at the end of the day, the most high God of Israel controls everything. He's the one who gave these enemy nations harp and all of their little toys. He's the one who gave them the rope to actually hang themselves. The most high God of Israel is always a thousand chess moves ahead of the enemy nations. And he, one of the ways that the most high loves to play his game of chess as he likes the enemy to think that they are in control of something. Have him run, he has them running around with chickens with their head cut off trying to guess the most high's next move. You can't guess the most high's next move. And I suggest, family, that you don't try to play that game too. You let Esau play that game. But we don't play that game. We put our faith in the Most High, that He gonna make the right move for us at all times. Even when we don't understand what the Most High is doing, the move the Most High is making, we still put our trust and faith that somehow, some way, He gonna pull us through. He always has, He always will. No matter how bleak the situation looks, Israel, you stay laser focused on the Most High and detach from this wicked world. Detach from this wicked world. Don't be caught up in Esau's folly. I'm going to give you a quick analogy of what it's like to be attached to this wicked world at this time. It will be the equivalent if you go into a party, big party, big house party, and you outside the house, and the roof of the house is on fire, it's smoking on fire, flames coming out the roof of the house, and you look at your watch, you see the smoke, you see the flames, but you say, oh, I see all these women. Oh, look at this, look at this booty on this one. I gotta get in there. I got five minutes, I'm going to try to get in there, get my drink on, get my smoke on, get my groove on. I got five minutes, I'm going to try to do my damn thing. And you go running inside that house with the roof is on fire. As soon as you take two steps into your house, bring the roof and the house down on you. That's the game you play when you try to be a part of this world. 
where you already know the Most High about to bring it down. And you still gonna try to go inside that house with the roof on fire. Don't be that dude, Israel. Don't be that female, sisters. You let the heathen be inside the house with the roof on fire. This is not our world, this is not our kingdom. We know it with every ounce of our being, this is not our world. Nothing seems right about this world. And nothing seems right about this world to the people who are so enamored and mesmerized by this wicked world. We see it. Seems like these gay pride parades, they just booming out of control. Esau got the whole world thinking that all of this wickedness is just another day. Sodom and Gomorrah, we live in it right now in our faces. The Most High putting Sodom and Gomorrah right in our faces to show that we right there, Israel. It's not the time to be messing around. It's not the time to be taking these times lightly. He's showing you with these storms and these weather events. What more has the mo does the Most High need to do to try to bring you out of this world and Lord willing into the next world that'll make this world look like a a garbage dump. Everything is upside down and backwards. I know you've heard me heard me say that many times. But we getting down to it now, Israel. We getting down to see who was who. And who made a what. And who really are going to be the most highest people. And who really going to stand by him to the end. We getting down to it now. Let's get into this, this first story here. This is by the James Munder channel. Edel might do, but this dude right here, I actually have some respect for him. He actually did a story on the Hebrew Israelites a while back. And one thing about James Munder is he just gives you the news. He don't talk about Republican, Democrat. If it's Democrat, it, it, he don't care. He just gives you the news and he don't put any type of political slant on it. He don't put any type of racial bias on it. When he did the story on the Hebrew Israelites, he actually said, and they said they're, that, they're, that they are God's chosen people. He said it just like that, matter of factly. He had no problem saying who we were and what, who we think we are and what we stand for. He had no problem saying it. So you might want to check out his channel because he's going to give you the news without a slant to it. He gonna just tell you how it is. And then we have another story from the RTR Prophecy Watch channel. This is actually one of our people from our family, a brother from our family putting it down, trying to show you some of the weather events that's going on. He adds a few scriptures in here and there. I suggest you support his channel. Just wanna take a quick moment, say thank you to all the people out there, especially his sisters. It seems like the sisters are coming through, sending me a lot of news stories and links and what have you making sure that I stay plugged in and on point to what's going on and trust me Israel even though you don't hear from me I'm right here with y'all I ain't going no damn place I ain't going nowhere Lord willing I'm taking it all in and I'm watching and learning and getting all these cues from the most high God of Israel but I'm not putting everything out to y'all at this time because then it just turns into you start getting overwhelmed. You just start hearing all this news every day and it almost gives you, starts making you desensitized. Oh, there's just another flood. Oh, this is just another earthquake. So I just stand back a little bit and let the news people do the news. And I speak to you guys when I need to speak to you guys, when Yahweh actually puts it hard on my spirit to come through and deliver a message to y'all. And that's just how I'm gonna roll from here on out. Yeah, how it puts on my spirit, I need to get in and say a few words. I get in and say a few words. If not, I'll just let the news people do the news people. But he put on my spirit, I needed to get on here and say a few words here today. Make sure everybody stays on point. Everybody stays focused. And everybody detaches from this wicked world. 
sure you got to do what you got to do. You got to do your job. You got to be around, you know, to get your, your everyday needs met. But other than that, this is really the time to detach from this wicked world. That's the, the message Yahweh keeps, keeps, keeps putting on my spirit very profoundly, Israel. Don't be getting caught up trying to celebrate these wicked holidays. Trying to be a part of Esau's festivities. Even trying to hang out with other people who are trying to be caught up. He's, how it's putting on my spirit, it's time to cut those people off from your life. Or are you going to get caught up? Are you going to be judging people instantly? Just like he has been doing. Just recently heard a story about there was a black family and their dog was making a lot of noise because they were shooting off a lot of fireworks. And the next door neighbor was from an enemy nation, probably Edomite, almost definitely he's an Edomite, off duty officer, went next, went, went next door to where the dog. The black folks' dog was making a lot of noise and got in a confrontation with them. Confrontation. End up shooting the dude and killing him because they want to be over there shooting off fireworks, celebrating Esau's day of when he actually started all this madness. When a lot of uh, our ancestors were still slaves and still going through hell, we got our folks wanting to celebrate this foolishness. Yeah, how we're judging people, ain't he? put them to death, put that dude to death right on the spot. He want to shoot off fireworks. He got a firework shot off on him. Dude busted a cap in him. And that's what I'm talking about, not being a part of this world. They shouldn't have been shooting off any fireworks. The Most High God of Israel is not playing. He is not playing. Let's get into this. This this New Orleans storm that's sitting off the coast about to make landfall. You know, we want to pray for our people in that area. We got a lot of our people in that area. We got a lot of people who look like us who aren't really our people in that area too. So we can't always think that just because they look like us, they are us. It just doesn't, it's just not true these days. But this is very prophetic because this is going to change the landscape, I think, in that area for good. And a lot of these places that get flooded, they may not ever see that water come down for a very long time. And this storm surge could be so great, we could actually see the Mississippi flow backwards. We have already shown you the maps of where this area is going to be changing as planet health keeps doing its thing on this earth plane. And all these areas are just going to be flooded for good. What's going to happen is that surge is going to start going south to north. And a lot of these levees aren't prepared to face a sword surge coming that way. They're all prepared and were designed to face a storm surge coming the other way, north to south. So it's as if these places are going to get overwhelmed from a totally different direction. They weren't designed to get overwhelmed from. That's what it seems like is playing out to me. That's what the Most High is putting on my spirit. That once again, Esau thinks they're going to get hit from the left and he gets a right hook from the right let's get into it Israel Barry is biblical Barry is biblical up to 25 inches of rain now they're saying I told you this thing is 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 crazy up to 25 inches of rain New Orleans faces storm of biblical proportions New Orleans is about to be hit by an extreme rainfall event that is likely to be the worst disaster in the city has seen since Hurricane Katrina. The cone contains the probable path of the storm center but does not show the size of the storm. Hazardous conditions can occur outside of the cone. So this thing is right here, ladies and gentlemen. It's going to hit. And you can see here. You can see here. On this map look at this this is where a lot of our people suffered the most during the 
the slave trade, isn't it, down here in the South, the Deep South? So it's very fitting that, of course, the Most High God of Israel is going to be hit, hitting the South with a little something extra because there's more wickedness and sin and cleansing that needs to happen in these areas. The South is not going to be something pretty. I think we can safely say that. And it doesn't matter who you are, everybody going to feel some of this in the South. So we want to say some prayers for our people. But we know yeah, how we got to do what he needs to do. And if he's willing to put us in captivity and slavery for 800 plus years for being stiff necked and hard headed, well, you damn sure know he's going to bring a storm through to cleanse out some wickedness if he needs to cleanse out some wickedness and who's ever in this storm path or ever in the way so be it they're gonna have to deal with this and so we always gotta try to pray for our people and, we are, and if you're in these areas you gotta pray extra hard for protection because you'll see it all the time and you especially saw it in the paradise fires where he'd go through and destroy a whole neighborhood and then you'll see one house standing that's only through the grace of God could something like that happen. That he'll save one place in the midst of a total area of destruction all around it. So you need to stay prayed up, Israel. Doesn't matter where you are. If you're in the south or wherever, you need to stay prayed up that the Most High protects you and your family and the entire nation of Israel. You shouldn't be selfish. You should be always praying that the Most High protects you, yourself, and the entire nation of Israel. But he going to do his thing. Here, ladies and gentlemen, it's going to hit. It is being projected that Tropical Storm Barry could officially become a hurricane before it makes landfall on Saturday. But in this case, the wind speed is not really that important. Instead, the massive amount of rain that this immense storm will dump on southern Louisiana is the greatest danger because the region is potentially facing flooding that is absolutely unprecedented. In fact, one weather expert is even warning that the flooding could be so dramatic that it might actually change the course of American history. Might change the course of American history? Hurricane Barry Path update shock spaghetti model shows devastating storm path. Hurricane Barry is set to strike New Orleans in the next 48 hours, and a shocking spaghetti model illustrates the multiple locations the destructive storm could hit. As we look ahead, we already know that we have a tropical storm watches Hold on, just it just did something really weird. As we look ahead, we already know that we have uh, tropical storm watches uh, in effect. That's this kind of this. Uh, I don't even know what color I would call that, but that's what we have this color here in effect. Kind of this uh, this a uh, purple color here uh, in New Orleans. That's a storm surge watch here. It looks like on the south side of Lake Pontchartrain. And then we have a hurricane watch that's in effect for coastal Louisiana. That's the area. We would call this puke pink. Looks like vomit, don't it? That's what we call this puke pink. And along with this whole vomit thing right here, we know that this is all toxic algae in here. People can't even go in these in this Gulf water all along Mississippi mostly. Yeah, how are not playing? People think they're still gonna enjoy the beaches and gonna try to pretend that we are not in unprecedented times where how we're gonna do what he needs to do to show people, no, you ain't gonna go to the beach. Cause I'm gonna make the water toxic. Oh no, you ain't gonna go out here and go fishing. Cause I'm gonna kill all the fish. That's what Yahweh are gonna say. And it, it, that's what this whole storm, one of the things I think we're starting to get to that point, Israel, where these enemy nation people are finally going to realize they ain't going to be able to do what they used to do. They ain't going to be able to go to the football game, to the Little League game. We're getting very close to that point, Israel. No, you ain't going to go play miniature golf here today because the miniature golf going to be underwater. 
no, you ain't gonna go watch the New Orleans Saints play because the whole city gonna be underwater. That's where we're getting Israel. We're getting to that critical point. Esau doing his damnness through all of these news agencies to try to pretend everything is fine. Going out of his way to give fake news. I subscribe to a lot of local channels just so I can see the fake news going on around the country. And it's all the same. It doesn't matter what city I'm listening to. They're going to put their fake news out about little local stories, little farmer market stories. And they ain't going to talk about anything else. They're going to try to put this whole persona out that everything is just fine. They're going to say, look, look at the stock market. We are record highs. Everything is just fine. Esau is the master of deception. Now I'm trying to tell y'all, this is not the time to be, get, be deceived, to think for one second that we are not in critical times. No, I'm not saying run around with a chicken with your head cut off, but I'm saying no, that the Most High could come do his thing at any time and render mass judgment on any city, any state, any country at any time. And he's really telling me that to put that through in this message. Do not try to be a part of this wicked world. Area that we have shaded in yellow. So right now, this is uh, our tropical uh, disturbance that we're watching. These are... And look at this spaghetti model, really. All of the technology we got in this day and age. You gonna tell me that you just gonna put all type of spaghettis up here. Like it can go over here, it can go over here. We don't know where this thing gonna go. This is actually Esau being honest right here because he knows the most high God of Israel is going to make this thing go where he wants it to go. And so this is them being a little honest right here that they don't have any control of this thing. And everybody out there talking about this is all engineered. If it's so engineered, why are they putting this huge spaghetti ridiculous model up there? Yeah, it's engineered all right by the most high God of Israel the spaghetti plot so we've put all the models on there and the general consensus of these models you can see if you just choose the the middle point it is in the central uh, coastal uh, central coastal louisiana where the system makes landfall so the models are in pretty decent agreement with this one of course we always have the outliers off to the east and also uh, well to the west but right now louisiana does look like it's going to make landfall uh, uh, landfalling uh, system with this uh, tropical disturbance um, all right. The spaghetti model shows that Hurricane Barry could strike New Orleans in a variety of locations in addition to the East Houston and West Panama City. The tropical yeah, storm could con it's been continue. The, it's been a while, so I had a nice little break. And it could continue inland and potentially impact Jackson, Shreveport, Hot Springs, Memphis, Montgomery, Atlanta. Weather expert Eric warned that while the impending disaster would be an, an entirely different type of flooding than 2005's Katrina, it could be just as harmful and even might change the course of American history. In the New Republic, he explained that while Katrina caused the failure of the southern U.S. state of Louisiana's storm surge levees, Hurricane Barry could instead breach levees on the already flooded Mississippi River. He said a river level breach would be an entirely different type of flooding disaster than what occurred during Hurricane Katrina. Hurricane Barry has been churning in the Gulf of Mexico and appears to be aimed at waterlogged New Orleans. It could be as devastating as Katrina. Giant storm set to hit New Orleans just in. Giant storm set to hit New Orleans. Biblical. Barry is biblical. Weather expert Eric warned that while the impending disaster would be an entirely different type of flooding than 2005 Katrina, it could just be as harmful and even might change the course of American history. Well, the NOAA, it says, why is there so much concern? Well, the NOAA is now projecting that some portions of southern Louisiana could get up to 25 inches of rain from the storm. Like I said, feet, feet. Remember when I said that and they were only predicting six? The NOAA Weather Prediction Center upped its rainfall forecast for Barry on Thursday afternoon. 
calling for a pocket of 20 to 25 inches amounts near Barry's track between Thursday and Sunday evening. It is very unusual for a NOAA WPC forecast to de depict amounts of above 20 inches, which testifies to the center's high confidence this is an extreme rainfall event. Many parts of New Orleans are already severely flooded, and if that amount of rain actually falls on the city over the next several days, the water pumps are going to be completely overwhelmed. In addition, this is the very first time that New Orleans has ever had to deal with a tropical system when water levels on the Mississippi are this high. According to CNN, the river is about 8 to 10 feet higher than normal and would be at this time of year. Tropical Storm Barry presents New Orleans with an unprecedented problem according to the National Weather Service. The Mississippi River, which is usually 6 to 8 feet in midsummer in the Big Easy, is now at 16 feet according to record flooding that's taken place all year along the waterway. Tropical Storm Barry is going to produce a substantial storm surge and normally that wouldn't be too much of a problem. But in this case, it could push the water level in the Mississippi above the levee system that protects New Orleans. The following comes from the Daily Mail. The center warned New Orleans residents that if the storm becomes a hurricane, it could potentially bring a coastal storm surge into the mouth of the Mississippi River, capable of raising the river's height to 20 feet above sea level, the highest crest in more than 90 years and high enough to overflow some sections of the levee system that's protecting the city. We are being told that authorities have great confidence in the levee system, but we all remember what happened during Hurricane Katrina. So basically, New Orleans is facing a perfect recipe for flooding, and nobody is quite sure what is going to happen next. Already, a state of emergency has been declared in five parishes. Look, there are three ways that L Louisiana floods storm surge, high levels, uh, high levels of rivers, and rain, Governor John Bell Edwards said Thursday, we are going to have all three. States of emergency have been declared in Orleans, Jefferson, St. Bernard, uh, Fakimenus, St. Charles Parishes, Jefferson Parish, and Plaquemines Parish have instituted mandatory evacuations as a precaution in low-lying areas or those outside major levees. And at this point, we don't have to wonder if there will be catastrophic flooding in New Orleans because some parts of the city are already under two to four feet of water thanks to all the rain that has already fallen. After Wednesday's onslaught of heavy rain, Valerie Burton said her neighborhood looked like a lake outside of her door. There was about three to four feet of water in the street. Pouring into the sidewalks at my door, Burton said. I went to my neighbors to alert them and tell them to move their cars. Over the next days, things will get a lot worse for New Orleans. The only question is how much worse. And guess what? Once the storm levees in southern Louisiana is expected to head north directly through the heartland of America, that's going to be time to worry too. Yes, the exact same area that has been relentlessly pounded by storm after storm for months. We were already potentially facing widespread crop failures all across the middle portion of the country, and this massive storm is going to make things a lot worse. Let me say something on that note real quick, because he just mentioned the crop failures. And yes, Israel, we do have famine coming. And you want to try to make sure you're best prepared for that the best you can, and Stock up on what you can right now while you can just store it away. Because, of course, the mainstream media and Esau is not going to say nothing about this. But there's already starting to be shortages in the stores. And Taco Bell was already talking about they have a, sh a shortage of tortillas right now. And there's not going to be a huge uh, alert or a huge warning when it happens. It's just going to be all of a sudden. So you definitely want to try to make sure you have a little bit of extra food in your house for when these the famine does hit. Because it could happen, you know, very quickly. And these truckers across the country are already talking about how they're seeing the whole trucking industry collapsing. They don't have product to ship. 
A lot of parts are flooded. They can't even get through certain parts of the United States. These are all part of those things that are going on behind the scenes, Israel, that this fake news media is not reporting on. They report on everything else that doesn't really impact your life, but they won't report on the fact that you're not going to be able to have access to food here in the near future. Esau wants everybody to think this thing just going to keep plugging along forever. But I'm hoping if you listen into this channel and other channels like this, you ain't going to get caught up in none of this madness. The Most High has put it on your spirit to be awake at this time, so that at least you can look after some of the ones, some of the loved ones around you. But famine is coming, Israel, and the famine of the word is coming also. I'll say something really quick on that. They're calling it ghosting. But I'm going to tell you, Israel, there was a time when this channel was seeing a lot more activity. The Most High God of Israel is putting the famine of the word out. He's, he's signaling, he's getting ready to cut off this information superhighway pretty soon. So everything that you've learned up until that point when the Most High says, okay, that's it. I'm cutting it all off. That's all you're going to have to roll with. That's all you're going to have to go with. So I hope you remember everything and you might even want to save some videos from some of the channels that have some valuable, valuable information that you might want to reference later. But you need to start getting it in your head that the Most High could pull the plug at any time. He's already signaling that to me. I can see it on this channel, on our channel. I see it. Trust me, I see it. A lot of people say, no, that's just Esau. Yes, Esau, but the Most High is telling Esau what to do and when to do it. I don't give all the glory to Esau. I know that the Most High is, is, the, is the ultimate one pulling all the strings, and he's working through Esau. He's working through Google. He's working through Facebook, saying, okay, plug, pull this plug, pull this, pull this. And any time he can pull it all, and I'm going to give all the glory to the Most High God of Israel. So it's very, be very aware. Famine of the word is on the, is on the chopping block. And food famine on the chopping block, Israel. According to Noah, the 12 month ending in June were the wettest 12 months in all of U.S. history. In all of U.S. history. All of U.S. history. Rain, and plenty of it, was the big weather story in June adding to a record-breaking 12 months of precipitation for the most contentious U.S. It's the third consecutive time in 2019, April, May, and June. The past 12-month precipitation record has hit an all-time high. And now, here in July, an absolutely monstrous storm is going to rip through the middle of the country at the worst possible time. The scenarios that I have been warning about are starting to develop right in front of our eyes and many Americans are becoming extremely concerned about what the months ahead will bring. It seems like every week we are talking about another unprecedented disaster. America is being hammered over and over and over again and this is the latest blow to New Orleans. Looks like it could be extremely severe. Let us hope that this storm does not turn out to be as bad as the meteorologists are now projecting because it appears that many Americans are about to have their lives completely turned upside down. Ladies and gentlemen, the most storm, uh, the most rain in 90 years is coming to the area, an extreme rainfall event. The levees could burst, but even if they don't, it's already waterlogged. It could change the course of American history. It could change the course of American history. Hurricane Barry is engineered. Be safe. I'm out of here. Thank you for that. James Munder. Yeah, it's engineered by the Most High God of Israel. Engineering the whole downfall of Esau Edom. The whole downfall of Babylon, the not so great. Been, it's, it's been in the works for what? 2,000 plus years. We coming up to it, Israel. We in the final chapters of this historic play. The final chapters. Need to take a deep breath sometimes and just take it all in. What an exciting time to be alive. 
in the final chapters of our father's spectacular script. He put together a script like none other. The people who everybody has ignored even to this day still look down upon, still get no respect, dangle a little thing about reparations in front of us like a carrot, want us to run around and act a fool. The Most High God of Israel said he gonna make us whole. And he said, we ain't gonna ask for nothing because he said the saints of the Most High gonna take the kingdom. We ain't supposed to be begging for nothing, Israel. We supposed to be taken. We supposed to be taken from the queue of Yahweh though. He said he gonna give the kingdom back to us. He didn't put us here to be begging and groveling for nothing. We ain't beggars and grovelers. We're royalty. And we said we gonna take the kingdom. We ain't gonna ask for a damn thing. We gonna take the kingdom. Let's get into this story right here. And I don't even know. Uh, Deborah Drummond. Deborah Drummer is Deborah Drummer. She sends me so many articles and so many, many links. I lose track of what, what actually she sent me. I don't know if she sent me this one or not, but I'll say thank you to Miss Deborah Drummer. But this here, we're just going to get into a few of the events from RTR Prophecy Watch, our brother running this channel. And you can see he gives all the glory to the Most High God of Israel. We actually chat back and forth sometimes. He knows who's really running this thing. And he knows don't share the Most High glory with another. He knows good and well. A lot of the Most High's folks waking up at this time are waking up to that fact too. To not give his glory to another. Actually, all we're doing is doing what he's asked us to do. All through the Old Testament, all through the Book of Remembrance, that's what he's asked us to do. And he didn't flip the script up in the New Testament. Somebody else did that because he don't change. Make sure you're honoring the Most High, giving him all the glory, and he's going to be the ones that pull us up out of here. Let's get into it. And thank you, everybody else who I might not I remember were sending me links I get a lot of emails these days everybody sending me links trying to do what they can do to keep the family on point of what's going on thank you if I forget to mention your name because I do get quite a few people contributing all praises to the most high God of Israel down a little bit and get some commentary we're gonna look at this stuff with our spiritual eye and see what we can bring through with some of these devastation we see look at this somebody got their foot on the brakes right here you should have put your foot on the brake long ago before you got in that storm this is a mess but you don't see none of this stuff on the mainstream media do you there's somebody in here. I mean, this must be very terrifying to somebody that, especially if they can't swim that well, they don't know where they gonna end up. Look at this car right here. It looks like they foot on the brake too. How are you gonna get out of that, that van? There's many people lo losing their lives in this, in this mess. We never hear about it though. Look at this. It's like a roaring rapid. You don't got to go to Colorado to ride the rapids. You can ride them right in your neighborhood now. Rapids are coming to you. You don't got to go to the rapids no more. And that's what you have putting through here. You don't have to go to the theater to get your excitement. You can just look right out your patio window. You can get all the excitement you need. You are now the, the performer in this play in the movie. 
you got a leading role now in the movie called Life. Look at these trees coming down. Trees have been up there 50, 100 years. They're no match for Yahweh and his angels when he gives them the, the go ahead to go ahead and render judgment. And that's exactly what you see here, Israel. The Most High God of Israel rendering judgment. Letting the world know. No, you ain't going to take the bus here today. Because I'm going to put this tree right on top of the bus. No, you ain't going to take this car right here to work today. Because it's going to have a tree right down the middle of it. This whole neighborhood devastated but there's nothing significant about this neighborhood this is all around the world look at this all you see is just a license plate this car in the water this is some type of parking garage Italy we talked about Europe being hit hard we don't hear much news out of Europe out of the mainstream media do we we got to go sniff out the truth ourselves these people benefited tremendously from the transatlantic Atlantic slave trade. All of these countries. So you how we're gonna send down some golf ball hail here. Of course, plant aided by planet hell. And look at this this dealership here. Look at this. Cars look like they've been on a war zone. So now these dealers either have to claim a huge insurance claim or just discount these cars tremendously to get them off the lot. But whatever you can see is not business as usual. And believe me, these insurance companies are feeling the heat. Yeah, how we're bringing it down on these insurance companies. They all were formed from the transatlantic slave trade. So yeah, how it says, you, you guys owe me some money. My people built your countries. My people built your whole livelihood. My people built your house. So here's the check and here's the bill. Here's what you owe us. My people built this restaurant right here. And they haven't been compensated one dime. The Most High God of Israel's chosen people haven't been compensated one dime by these devils. They actually try to hope we just forget about all of this. But how it told us don't, don't forget anything. Remember the days of old. He told us to remember the days of old. People thought they were going to go sit on the beach here this day, didn't they? Ain't nobody sitting on the beach this day. He going to get a translation. The Most High God of Israel just destroyed everything. That's what he just said. And we never saw it coming. That's what he said. Look at this van. Here we are back in the States. The country that loves to pretend that slavery didn't exist. I just hope these Negroes will stop talking about these damn reparations and slavery. And what can we do to shut them up? That's how America th looks at us, Israel. These uppity Negroes should be grateful for what they got. Lucky they didn't they ain't still in the in the cotton fields. That's how they they like to think about us. That this is their world. And we should just shut up and be happy with the scraps we get. That's how they like to think about us, Israel. When actually the exact opposite is true, you how it made all this for us. And these people were supposed to be serving us. But we screwed it up. This little bald-headed dude right here was supposed to be safe, serving us. We screwed it up, Israel. So we do have to acknowledge we, we screwed it up. And this is what happens when we screw it up. He finds the most wicked people to discipline us, doesn't he? We screwed up, Israel. We can't screw up again. Lord willing, when he redeems us, we can't screw it up again. We need to do what he asks us to do. Look at this. They thought they were going to go.
doing a little windsurfing there this day. Yahweh says, I got different plans for this beach on this day. I got different plans. And that's where we are, Israel. We got to follow the, our father's script. Stop trying to follow our script. No, it's not okay to go do pride. No, that's not okay. That's not our script. Show me in the book of remembrance where he asks us to go jump around half naked acting a damn fool. That's not who we are. These people used to look up to us, envy us back in the dark ages. We had all the juice. That's all they could do was just serve us in the dark ages. We got complacent, didn't we? We started to want to do the wicked things of, of the enemy nations. We didn't think that the most high God of Israel would come down this hard on us, did we? We thought we could get away with it. What's he going to do? We going to worship a golden calf. What's he going to do? Now we see what he going to do. Now he's saying, what you going to do? Look at this. This is flammable. Some type of oily substance coming out of the ground. Literally hell coming through the surface, Israel. Hell is coming through the surface. And the news ain't going to tell us hell coming through the surface. They ain't going to say that. They ain't going to tell us planet hell. The two hells are trying to come together. Like two magnets. You got planet hell and the hell underneath our feet. Attracted to one another. All coming to be dealt with. Everything that we don't want to look at, the Most High going to make us look at it. That's the gist of the story. All that nasty racism, all the hate, all the anger, he going to bring it all to the service to be dealt with. All the pedophiles and the perverts, aren't he bringing them to the surface, ain't he? He going to show you who the pedophiles and the perverts are. And they come in all shapes, sizes, and colors. Look at this in Mexico. Now Mexico, they, most of these people, they just dream of being Esau. That's all they dream about is Esau in the white man's world. And they look at us as we ain't nothing too. Let's just be honest about it. A lot of these Mexicans look at us like we ain't nothing. That they better than us. And so the ones who haven't figured it out, they're going to render the same judgment as Esau. They're in love with the enemy. What's I not playing? He ain't playing. The place is just devastated. The local government is going to keep trying to tell that bald-faced lie that this is just temporary. Once this storm passes, everything going to be back to normal. Knowing good and well, they behind closed doors shaking, shaking in their boots. Know that the second exodus is underway. Know they in over their head, literally, they in over their head. I think even they underestimated the power and the wrath of the Most High God of Israel. They thought that they could handle this. They got it. No, they ain't got it. But they gonna get it. They're showing the, the storm path. It's gonna go right up the Mississippi River. And let me show you this for a second, Israel. The, the Most High, he gonna send this right up the Mississippi River. And all of this land here, they can't hold the water. It's just gonna keep seeping out, east and west. And this is why, when I showed you that map of the future maps of the U.S., the Navy maps, just Google future Navy maps if you don't know what I'm talking about, if you didn't see that video. Google, Google future Navy maps. And you're going to see this whole area right here. It, the United States gets split in half all the way up the Mississippi. The Mississippi just cannot contain all this water. And this is just going to be one huge waterway all the way to the Great Lakes. 
Great Lakes all the way to the Gulf could be 100 miles wide when the Most High is done with this area. Of course, the media ain't going to tell you none of that. Real estate prices will be plummeting in all these areas. People will be in panic to move out of them. Esau going to try to tell everybody everything is just fine. But you can see the storm coming right up the Mississippi that already is overflowing. You can see Yahweh has a plan. And he's going to split the United States right in half. And that's going to be very symbolic because the people are split in the United States. You got half the people thinking that everything great again. The orange demon Trump going to make everything great again. And you got another half of the country who knows this country has never been great again. It's never was great. How can you make something great that's never been great? I'm going to give you a quick analogy. Now we're on the most high being great again story. Peep it like this, Israel. Picture a relationship. And a woman and a man are coming together in a relationship. And they fall in love, love at first sight type of relationship. They all goo goo, gaga over each other. So they get married really quick, only known each other a few days. First day they married, the husband ends up beating the crap out of the woman. Raping her, almost puts her to death, but he just stops just short of putting her to death. The first day of their marriage. He's very abusive. But the woman, she sticks in there for some reason. She stays with this guy. And he keeps telling her, I'm going to make this marriage great again, honey. Trust me, that was just, I just had a bad day. I'm going to make this marriage great again. So she sticks with the dude. Five years later, she's still beating the crap out of her, abusing her treating her like garbage but he's still telling her honey just stick it out I'm gonna make this thing great again I just hit a rough patch I'm gonna make this marriage great again and after a while the lady's like damn this marriage ain't never been great you've been abusing me from day one how you gonna make this marriage great again but in the guy's eyes he's very delusional he's thinking that they have had some wonderful moments he hasn't been beating the crap out of her. He's just had some bad days. He's got alcohol problem. But other than that, their marriage is doing just great. And that's the epitome of America. You got a whole segment of the society totally oblivious to the fact the United States was built on rape, robbery and murder, broken treaties, broken dreams. Just totally oblivious to that. Slavery, torture just oblivious to it. So when they hear the orange demon talk about make it great again, they actually believe it because they oblivious that this country was built on lies, deception, greed, slavery, torture. Just like that, that marriage, the husband is totally delusional, but the woman knows it can never be great again, that she was in a dysfunctional relationship from day one. And that's exactly where we are, Israel. We've been in this dysfunctional relationship from day one. And we're putting everything we got on the Most High God of Israel to redeem us up out of this dysfunctional relationship that he put us in to teach us a lesson. I hope we all learned it and we had enough of this dysfunctional relationship. And the people who haven't had enough of this dysfunctional relationship, the Most High going to go ahead and render his judgment on them because there ain't no saving them. They don't even know they're in a dysfunctional relationship. Them are the the Sambo Coon sellouts still trying to coon for the oppressor. They have no idea they in a dysfunctional relationship. They gonna coon it out to judgment day. Well, so be it. We don't got no time for the coons. We got to roll with our folks who know this is not right. So it's time to acknowledge this dysfunctional relationship, Israel, and move up out of it. Yeah, how we're going to make us great again. That's the only thing that can make us great again. So we got fires breaking out everywhere. New fires breaking out in Ma Maui, Ohio, uh, Hawaii. We got more fires still going on up there in Alaska. 
It's a hot mess out there in terms of fires. This is one of the ways that the uh, how it uses to clean the area, cleanse the area, and relieve negative energy too is through fires. Because one way or another, you got to cleanse this area up for us, Israel. You got to clean up this wicked world because it's no good trying to build a new Israel on a land where just wickedness and sin hasn't been cleansed out. I told you this is really about energy. A lot of y'all don't really understand or believe me when I tell y'all that, but it really is. It's about energy. And it has to be cleansed or transmuted. It just don't go away. And that's why the Most High God of Israel is going to put the enemy nations in slavery for a thousand years. Because that energy has got to be paid back. It just don't go away. As much as Esau wishes it would. Look at this, man. Yeah, how we're just doing his thing. He got to cleanse this area out. Wow. DC got hit too, didn't they? Now DC have been playing a lot of games. They got a lot of their anti-weather mechanisms going on over there. So they've been trying to block what Yahweh been trying to send their way. But it's going to come a point where Yahweh just goes ahead and hits them. He, you know, he let them think that they can block it. And he lets them block it a little bit here and there. Until he just sends his angels in and go, okay, let's go ahead and take care of DC. Because eventually this whole area will be underwater. Back in Mexico. Yeah, all these homes built on these cliffs, they ain't going to fare too well. This is Kentucky River. Now, for y'all didn't really hear what was going on down here in the Kentucky area, let me fill you in. We had the Jim Beam plant. There's a big warehouse fire down here where they were storing something like 50,000. I forgot. It was a enormous amount of bourbon that they sit there to just let it age. And how it went ahead and put it up in flames. And when you have a whole warehouse of alcohol in flames, you can't put out that fire. There's too much fuel. So they couldn't put it out. They just had to let it burn out. And then, of course, a lot of that alcohol drained into the Kentucky River because the Jim Bean storage facility was right on the river. So now they got another disaster. It's killing all the fish. There's no oxygen in the water for the fish. All that alcohol hit the water, so it's killing all the fish. And so that's where we are, Israel. And that's another reason. I tell you, the most high, he judging these people. We know who, how Jim Bean made their fortune billions of dollars built off the slave trade I actually had read somewhere that the whole formula for whiskey and all these alcohols were invented by black folks they just took it all and slapped their patent on it this whole thing goes a lot deeper than we even realize Israel to what these people have really stolen and taken from us we don't even know the full scope of this how much they've stolen from us and benefit from it but you know who do, does know? Yeah, the Most High God of Israel. He knows to, down to the penny how much they've stole from us. And that's why I say he's the only one who can make us whole because we don't even have an idea, no idea of how much they stole from us. And you can't put a money amount on it. There's no way you can calculate that. No way. And there's no way they could have, even have enough to pay it back. That's why all these reparation talks are just ridiculous because there is no amount than anybody can pay to make this right. But the Most High God of Israel, he gonna make it right. And he's told us it takes a thousand years to make it right. That's what he's told us. It's gonna cost a thousand years and a lot of blood, sweat, and tears. I'm gonna go with what Yahweh says. But yeah, that Jim Bean plant tore up the Kentucky River. It's still devastated. It'll probably never be the same. But that's Yahweh. 
just bringing judgment left and right. But a lot of y'all probably didn't even hear about that gym being plant going up in flames. Or actually it was a storage facility. It was a big fire. I saw it. Look at all these dead fish. It was actually in the millions, but he only gonna see a few here. And here we go again. And this is Esau trying to get our people involved in all this type of wickedness. Because they just being who they meant to be. This is who the Most High has made these people to be. He made them to go off. To see who he going to get to Israel to go off with them. Like I said, you can make a multiple choice test. You're going to put some wrong answers on the test. And this is nothing but a wrong answer. That ain't the right answer. He's a wrong answer. You're going to see, okay, who... Which one of Israel go starts going after these wrong answers? Because Yahweh put the right answers right in our book. And he put a lot of wrong answers in the New Testament. And a lot of people going for the wrong answers right in there too. So here's another wrong answer. Showing you how to be a wicked heathen. But they just being who they meant to be. How can you be mad at somebody that the Most High is set up to do this? They being exactly who they meant to be. And that's why I say we got to be who we meant to be, Israel. And stop trying to go after the wicked ways of the heathen. He made us great from the get-go. And we fell from grace. We fell off trying to be something we weren't supposed to be. Taking responsibility is a big part of this captivity, Israel. It's a big part. We can sit here and yell from the rooftops at how wicked Esau, Edom is, and all the enemy nations are. But if we don't look each look in the mirror and be completely honest with ourselves and say we're the ones who got us into this, well, we haven't learned all we needed to learn from this captivity. It was us. It was our forefathers. Because a lot of times it was actually us too. But we put ourselves in this situation. And we need to look in the mirror and be honest about that. We can't always just put everything on Esau Edom. And Lord willing, he going to pull us up out of here. And Lord willing, we learn what we needed to learn from this. And Lord willing... We're going to get to go home, Israel, wherever that may be. We're going to put our trust and faith in the most high God of Israel. And we're going to keep rolling with him till the wheels fall off. Shalom.